If you're in Quebec and you're looking to go to college because you just finished your degree in high school and all that and you're looking at all the options, you got like Dawson, Vanier, a bunch of a bunch of options and you're looking at one of them, Marinopolis, I'm going to be the one to tell you don't. Before I start this video, I have to say this really, really clearly. I don't think your degrees are useless. I don't think they're worthless and I don't necessarily think you're wasting time. Please just watch the video and I'm going to explain all my points as I go. Before I change your perspective on how all this works and, and show you that college might not be the way for you, I'm going to have to let you know right now that there are industries that do require a degree. You're not going to become a doctor with your $10 Udemy certificate. You're not going to be building bridges, cars, buildings, all those sorts of things with this certificate you got online for free. Most of those industries won't even let you put a foot in the door without a degree. Here's the problem. The legitimate value of college and universities is, that, is in professors. You're paying someone who has experience you don't and information you need and you're hoping that they have the ability to give that to you. The problem is that unless you're going to the top of the line colleges in the world, that's probably not the reality of your specific college. And in Marianopolis, that was a big issue that I kept seeing. Most of the teachers have stagnated in their field and have defaulted to teaching as an end of means. They need to pay bills, they need to feed mouths, and they're human, they don't want to go homeless, so that's what they have to do to make money. And I'm sure there are good teachers out there, and there were in Marinopolis, but when a lot of the teachers are the first ones out the door, the first ones out of all the students, and it's the teacher that the, leaves the classroom, I think that means a lot. And if you hit up their glass doors or their Indeed reviews, you can kind of see that there is a bit of a sort of pattern with teachers working at Marinopolis and that they really don't enjoy their job. The problem for me with college is that it's very theory heavy and when it comes to practical experience it's kind of on the table for you to figure out on your own when you're and it, it's just it feels wrong when you're paying so much money to learn everything that they maybe should give you that practical experience as well but I like to think of it as driving a car the real learning the real experience happens when you're sitting in the car you're putting your foot on the gas you realize you put a little bit too much or a little too little or you turned a bit too hard or you didn't do a signal here or you didn't do there you figure out these things as you're driving the car and then you go and you do the theory in class and you can apply that to your practical experiences. But theory without any tangible experience is really hard to apply to anything and then it just becomes useless. Or at least not very useful. Like I can tell you don't press the brake too hard when you get in the car. But until you get in the car and you slam that pedal and you nearly crash and then you realize okay well that was too hard. Then until that moment you won't really know what I'm saying. Of course the idea is there but the actual practical experience is going to happen when you make that mistake physically pushing that pedal. All this became a really brutal realization for me when I searched out of sciences and I went into business and I sat in my business class and my teacher uh, pretty much revealed that he never actually ran a successful business because why would he be a teacher? He would be running his successful business. So someone is sitting in front of me that's supposed to have experience I don't have and information I need when they haven't done it themselves. Th that just seems a bit wrong, right? But yet he was sitting there in class teaching the next generation, very impressionable generation, about business, something he has never done successfully. And you know, he's being paid, he's being given money. This is his job to theoretically tell us and teach us about experiences that he has that we don't and information that he has and that we don't. But yet, how can he give us that if he doesn't have it himself? It just seems really weird and wrong and it just didn't make sense. The funny thing that even in those classes, they still treated entrepreneurship like a God-given gift. It's not something you earn. It's something that you're just given to because you're very fortunate or something to do with your family or just, you know, there's always a reason why no one's an entrepreneur. We aren't living in the 1800s anymore and I don't need to sit in front of a classroom and read a PowerPoint that you could just email me. I could just do it on my phone. And today, in the present world, 80% of the things I do can be done off of my phone. There's certain things I have to be on my computer to do, like edit videos and all that, but 80% of my business I could just run off my phone and that's what I do. I'm at the gym sometimes, I just go, I'm, I'm answering emails, I'm doing everything I need to do on this phone right here. But entrepreneurship isn't something everyone wants and that's totally okay, so let's move back into the degrees. Also, please don't start showing me like college versus high school grad salaries and all that because you'll, we, we all know that most high school dropouts don't actually give a f subscribe about improving themselves and becoming better people. They just want to just want to fuck around. So let, let's not get into those numbers. Now, let's say you have a really great teacher and that's absolutely amazing, right? Now you're going to have a good chance at truly kicking ass in your in your uh, curriculum or whatever you're doing in school. 
well, not really, at least in Quebec. You see, in Quebec, Canada's laughing stock, may I add, we use a scoring system called the R-score. The reason that I want to bring up R-score is because it's the primary reason why universities, at least in Canada, will look at you. If you have an R-score that matches their requirements, they're going to look at you, and if you don't, they're most likely going to push you to the side and check on the next person. If you've never seen R-score, let's do a quick example. We got a calculator here. We're going to go and throw in your mark. You got an 85, which is really good in your class. The class only did about a 75. The standard deviation was, let's say, 10. And the average of the whole high school or college or whatever you're in was 75 as well. We're gonna calculate that. And you got a 30, which is a respectable score. But let's say for medicine and something like McGill, you need about a 35 average. So you did 10% better than the whole average, but because of the deviation and how well everyone else did, you don't get that high of a score. A perfect example of this is, let's say you got a 95, which is an amazing score, and the class got a 90, right? And the average was a 90. You guys all did amazing. You should all be rewarded for it. Not really. That's not how our score works. So we're going to go and calculate that, and you only got a 32. Of course, 32 is a good number, but the fact that you got a 95, let's even push that to 100. Now you're hitting 35. 100 in the class is what took you to 35. 35 is not even a perfect score, by the way. It goes all the way up to 50. You cannot go over 100. You can never push 100 on your grade in school, and you won't even get rewarded for that. You'll get exactly what you need to apply to, let's say, a medicine school. That's an absolutely absurd way of calculating someone's value and intelligence, and it's just so wrong, and it doesn't work. But for some reason, out of everywhere in the world, Quebec is the only place that decides to use this stupid strategy or the stupid logic. So without getting, again, too deep into our score, I gave you an example with the calculator. If your grade is really good, but it's still close to the class average, you get a relatively known low number in relation to what you got. So it, like we showed an example, if you do really well, but everyone else does really well, your R score isn't gonna be as high as it technically should be. It's not showing your true intelligence, it's showing your intelligence in relation to everyone else, which is a really, really scummy way of calculating your intelligence. It really makes you hope that everyone does really bad and that you do really good. And of course you're gonna say, no, people aren't that terrible. Well, it's a little different when you're putting everything on the line to live somewhere. You're probably working a couple jobs just to pay your rent so you can live in the, you know, live in this area, which is not a cheap place to live in. And the fact that it decides your future if you do well or not, or at least what everyone thinks. So it becomes a very negative atmosphere and everyone wants to sabotage each other, but they all act like friends. It's just a very backstabbing kind of environment that it, that it in encourages. And this issue scales all the way up. So if you were to get a hundred on in a class and you were to peak, you can technically, like we saw in the example, get between 33 to 35 R score, which is really low for how well you did. Of course, 35 is good enough to get you into a health school, but it's really low in relation to the score that you got in that class. And I'm not trying to say competition is bad, but when you set it up in a system like this, it's not encouraging to work well with others. It's not encouraging to support your friends and make them do better. It's kind of very like, do I help my friend at the cost of myself or do I worry about myself and, and screw my friend? It's a very scummy environment. And that's very noticeable going walking around the Marinopolis halls. Everyone puts a smile on their face, but it's really not like that. I know I will ever admit it. I don't really think the education system in Quebec is actually going to change much, so it's really up to you to change your mentality about how valuable is this versus actually going and building projects and getting practical experience. Of course, unless you're trying to get into an industry that forces you to get a degree like becoming a doctor or specific types of engineers or all that. Now, the problem with degrees for me is that people pursue degrees rather than the education they're getting from those degrees. People would rather say they're a computer scientist than saying they can do the things that a computer scientist can do. Everyone's so focused on the idea of getting that degree and getting that paper because it will set them for life versus getting the skills that will set them for life and that they can apply in more than one situation. And because of that mentality, there isn't much that separates you from every other generic college student. There's so much supply out there, but there's not enough demand. And when I say that, you know, of course people are going to be like, Mike, there's always jobs out there. And you, mm, you know what? It's like Honda Civics. You can see a Honda Civic every two, three cars on the road. But when you go to the dealership, there's another 100 to 200 sitting in the back waiting, collecting dust. Like the programming industry, a lot of you familiar with that from my channel, the programming industry is hugely oversaturated, but it's oversaturated with people who can only kind of do the job. They don't have people, they're not saturated with people who can do the job. 
And that's why you see a lot of like 17 to 20 years old people who like dropped out of high school and learned to code in their mom's basement and go and get out jobs that like pay them like 80k versus getting a degree and then getting paid 80k and now a huge percent of that is going into your debt. All these success stories in the software industry, it's because of that reason. They're not the same typical generic student. They, they pop out when you're holding a thousand resumes and you got one person who has done it differently, it kind of pops out. Little backstory, when I was working my job, the colleague I was with, uh, he, he was the guy who would do the interviews and he said something along the lines of if the, your college degree is the most important thing about you, you're really, really boring. And I really kept that to heart for a long time because it's really true. A degree is not a bad thing. I don't think it's useless. I'm going to say this a billion times. I don't think your degree is useless, but if you weigh everything on everything you have onto that degree, it's just not enough because everyone else is doing it as well. What you need is solid projects that show your skills whether it's a bunch of paintings you did or showing that you know you know how the stock market works and you've done well good trades or um, you know you've designed things on, on programs you could do graphic design whatever it, you're, whatever you're doing you have to show that you could do the job with projects that reflect the job you're trying to get into now that we went over the larger problem of college degrees and Quebec education more specifically I want to talk a lot about Marinopolis. I went to Marinopolis for about a year and a half and I would reflect my experience in one sentence, don't go there. So Marinopolis College, most classrooms look like the first ever classroom but colorized. School is always under construction, there's absolutely no room to breathe air, it's so small and it's so populated, and also conveniently whenever you need it the air conditioning is broken. Everyone pays the same amount but some people get really good teachers and some people get really bad teachers but you pay the same amount, it's just up to luck. Your education is in the hands of luck. The fact that they couldn't find enough good teachers, now you might get stuck with one that's not very good. Of course, those who have been watching my channel for a while, I always say, don't rely on those teachers, don't rely on anyone but yourself, go on your computer at home. I honestly wouldn't even go to class, I'll get into that later, and I would just sit at home and study on my computer because that's where I can get most of the relevant information that I need. The atmosphere in the school is really garbage because of what I explained earlier with the R score. You got a bunch of people that are spending a lot of money to be in this college, and their success is related to how well you do. So if you do worse and they do better, they become technically in their eyes more successful in school. So it's not anymore about getting that 100% mark and trying to be better than yourself than you were yesterday. It's all about being better than everyone else and making sure everyone else doesn't do very well. Like I said, the school is very small. You have absolutely no room to just go and talk it's all about school, 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 school. When you're in the cafeteria, all people do is study. When you go any aisle, any any staircase in the school, there's people filling down the stairs, just reading their books on their laptops. There's absolutely nowhere to go. So if you need it, you need a breather, you need a minute, you need to get away from civilization, you gotta go and walk about 15 minutes to find the nearest location where you can go and sit down. The difference is something like Dawson that is inside a mall in downtown Montreal where you could literally go anywhere and get away from all these students. For me, the biggest issue in Marinopolis are the teachers. The teachers have a lot of room with how they work. It's very lenient. We are humans and humans judge subconsciously. I can look like your third grade bully and because of that you can resent me without even knowing me. It's just how we work, we make associations, you know, your bully had black hair and I have black hair so now you associate me with him and you don't like me, off the bat. Teachers have the room to be nice or not to people, they can kind of ghost you and they can kind of help you a little bit more than they would help others. It's a really scummy system for people who don't want to show up to class and that was a big problem for me. I don't work well in classes, I work well at home, in my room, in my enclosure let's call it. But in the teacher's eyes, I'm just someone who doesn't care about school because I'm not in class every day. Which that also became a problem for me because teachers started to take attendance. So I'm, 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 there, I'm sitting here and they're telling me, you have to make a decision for the rest of your life. This is a really important career decision here. You gotta choose what you wanna get into and you know, you're gonna have to be paying for it and all that. But if you wanna leave the classroom or if you have to go to the bathroom, you have to let us know. Does that really make sense to you? You're supposed to be treated like an adult and you have to ask to go to the bathroom. And back to the teachers having a bunch of room to play with what they can do and make their own rules. That business teacher I was telling you guys about, the one that never ran a successful business, he had the rule of no computers or electronics in the classroom. This is a business teacher where in 20, this was 2016, no computers allowed. This guy was the most boomer you can get. And he was teaching us, the next generation, how to run businesses and set up a successful life for ourselves and others. Okay, Boomer. Now, I went on my rant. You listened, you know, thanks for being here on my TED Talk. 
But let's talk about some solutions. If the industry you want to get into does not require a degree, like becoming a writer, photographer, illustrator, programmer, coder, filmmaker, mechanic, plumber, musician, any of those type of creative jobs, at least give a try, you know, taking that gap year that you're going to take to go vacation like in Cabo or something, take that year to go and, and explore hobbies, try things you've never tried before, try and find what you truly enjoy and try to learn it on your own. Try and maybe start a little business on something that you enjoy, a little mom and dad kind of shop on Shopify or something. Try and start your own thing, see if that works for you and then make the decision if you think you need college or not. Everyone jumps out of high school not knowing what the hell they want to do, jumps into a curriculum or some type of degree they're going to pursue because they don't know what else they like, and then they get so deep in shit and so deep in debt, unless they have someone to support them, that they can't go back. And they have to live the next 5-10 years of their life, the most creative years of their life, the, the best years for you to explore things and to take risks and all that, paying off debt for something that they don't even use. For me personally, audiobooks is literally what took me out of shit and, and brought me to a bit less shit. I'm not in a position here where I'm making millions of dollars in my Dan Balzerian lifestyle, but I think the biggest progress I made was from audiobooks. That's where it started. I can't read for shit, but I can listen and that's where it started for me. Then I moved on to websites like Khan Academy. That was pretty much what everyone used in Marianopolis anyways because most of the teachers have like these shitty Russian accents or something and you have no clue what they're saying. So Khan Academy was a great one for chemistry, math, and now they're adding like everything you can think of. You can probably get a college degree on Khan Academy. And Brilliant.org was the big one for me. That's where I got a lot of artificial intelligence kind of things and really went into machine learning and all that. So if you're doing like math or programming or any type of STEM, that's where I would go for that kind of stuff. And it's all for relatively cheap. It's good structured information for a good price. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. So now, depending on the type of industry you want to get into and how you want to get into it, it kind of really, there's really many ways about getting about it. If you're trying to be an entrepreneur in an industry, you're going to have to spend a lot of time learning on your own and applying those things you learn in your business or whatever you're doing. If you're trying to get a job, you're going to have to do something similar, but instead of applying these things on your business, you're going to be applying them to projects and then taking those projects and being like, hey, here are my beautiful projects, hire me please. So let's say for programming jobs, the best thing is when you can show up showing a project that's similar to what you'll be doing on the job. That's usually what sets you miles apart from everyone else because everyone comes in with their generic projects that they stole from a certificate from a Udemy course and they like reorganized everything and they're like, hey, look what I made, I made a to-do list. And then you got those guys who come in and they're like, well, you guys do real estate, you guys are run a, a home real estate website and here's one I made for myself that maybe even generates a bit of money. So I already know how to do this, I know how to do the business side of it, I can provide value to your company and it's all about showing that you can provide value for the company or providing value for your own company, for your own business. 18 to 25 are the years where you want to be taking risks because you're going to learn from those risks really well. Once you move on to later years, things change. You have now your own apartment and your mortgage, possibly a kid to feed. Things change. You kind of get locked into that script of going to college, working your job till you're 65 and hoping that the money runs, that you run out before the money you saved all those years runs out. In conclusion, tuition is increasing, salaries are not, at least not at a level where it makes sense. If you're getting a pay raise, most companies, inflation will turn that into like a one or 2% pay raise. Job security with your degree is a total scam. I'm sorry, you're not gonna get more security because you have a degree except for the fact that they might use that as manipulation knowing that you're in more debt than someone else so you'll be more loyal. When there's a tool in your toolbox and you haven't used it for years you try and sell it or get rid of it or you stop carrying it around. You don't just carry it around because it was loyal to you for a year or two. I'm sorry but that's the harsh truth of how employees are treated. You are a tool for the company's goal. The CEO was once an employee and said fuck this shit I'm gonna make my own company so that I can be living my dream life and if you're not gonna, if you're not helping that dream, sorry, but he's gonna have to get rid of you to, to save his own future, and that's just how it is. Of course, some CEOs are gonna be much nicer when it comes to letting you go, and some are not. But the idea of job security because you have a degree or job security in general is just a it's, a, it's a big meme. It's a big joke. It just doesn't happen. It's not true. Don't believe me? Look at Wayfair. Look at HSBC. Just because of the coronavirus, HSBC, which has 235,000 employees, got rid of 15% of their workforce. 15% of their workforce based off of one year uh, of like a revenue loss. So 15% of 235,000, whatever the math is that I'll put on the screen, got fired. 
And they're going to be getting fired over the next three years because they can't just fire 35,000 people. They need them to do their jobs and they need them to train other people to do their jobs. So they're just going to slowly roll off over the next three years, all those people. I know it's scary straying away from the traditional path. And it was something that took me a good amount of time to kind of forget about on my own. But from my first hand experience, it was the best decision I made ever. And I'm not saying that necessarily because of what I'm doing. I'm just saying stopping school and taking that semester to kind of figure things out on my own and see what I truly want to do and what I truly, you know, I'm good at and not good at and reading and all, all these opportunities I had when I stopped school for a minute, it totally changed my life. And I do recommend it for you. I'm not saying your degrees are useless. I think it's like the third time I said this in the video. I don't think your degrees are useless. I don't think they're worthless. I don't think necessarily you're wasting your time. I think you're hurting yourself by not taking the time to truly figure out what you want to do. Of course you can say you want to do something and change it later, but just doing college for the idea of getting college done just because you want security or makes you more confident or it's going to properly prepare you and you're going to feel prepared at the end, which is what no one ever feels prepared. First of all, all, all those reasons are reasons why you should stop, take a minute, take a breather, figure things out, and then get back at it when you're ready to go. Now that I've opened your third eye of truth, feel free to like the video and subscribe so much more of the shit coming on. Maybe we'll do some college cringe or something. We'll just take the idea from Josh and reuse it here. There's a lot more coming.